All right, guys, welcome back to another random videos. This video here I seen a while back, and this is one of the strangest, most craziest true stories I've ever heard in my entire life. This is a must watch. And yeah, this it, it gets pretty crazy. And uh, I didn't even know it. I couldn't even believe it was real until, you know, I uh, did some research on it and found out. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is 100% real. All right, guys, let's just get into the video. The following story was pulled from a 1997 article in the British Medical Journal. The article was written by the psychiatrist who treated the patient who will be the focal point of the story. The only reason I bring this up is because this story truly sounds made up. And it's not. One night in the winter of 1984, a healthy middle-aged woman, who we'll call Brenda for this story, was at her home in London reading a book when she suddenly heard a voice in her head. It said, Please don't be afraid. I know this must be shocking for you to hear me speaking to you like this, but this was the easiest way I could think of. My friend and I, we used to work at the children's hospital and we would like to help you. Brenda couldn't believe what was happening. She had never heard voices in her head before and this voice that was speaking to her it was so clear and it did not sound like any voice she had heard before. And so at first, Brenda just sat on the couch and didn't do anything and just waited, hoping that maybe she was just imagining this. But the voice in her head seemed to pick up on her reaction and said, Brenda, this is not a hallucination. We're real and we want to help you. Brenda did not believe it was real. She believed she had just lost her mind. And so for the rest of the night, she just completely ignored the voice in her head. And first thing the next morning, she went to her doctor's office and said, please help me. The doctor referred her to a psychiatrist. And so she went over to the psychiatrist's office. And after they performed an evaluation of Brenda, they said, look, I don't really know why why you're hearing these voices. There's no clear medical explanation for why. And so Brenda was ultimately diagnosed with something called functional hallucinatory psychosis, which basically means Brenda was hallucinating, but there was no clear reason why. The psychiatrist began treating Brenda with an antipsychotic drug, as well as with supportive counseling. Over the next couple of weeks, as Brenda diligently took her medications and went to her appointments, the voices eventually stopped. And so Brenda went into her psychiatrist's office and she said, Doc, you saved me. The voices are gone. I'm so happy. And the psychiatrist would later recall that Brenda was visibly relieved. It was obvious that she was not making this up, that she really believed that she had these voices and now they were gone. And so after Brenda left the office, she actually went on vacation with her family outside of London just to celebrate the fact that she had not, in fact, lost her mind. But while she was away on holiday, she started hearing the voices again. And this time they told her she had to get back to London as soon as possible because there was something terribly wrong with her. And they gave her a very specific street address that she was supposed to go to to seek treatment. And so Brenda is horrified that the voices are back in the first place, but what she's really scared about is that maybe there's some truth to what these voices are telling me. Maybe there is something wrong with her. And so Brenda ran to her husband and she explained what happened. And he was very reassuring and said, look, honey, you should just totally ignore the voices again. There's probably nothing wrong with you. Just try to relax and have a nice vacation. But Brenda could not relax. She could not ignore the voices because they were constantly telling her, you need to leave. You need to go back. There's something wrong with you. And so finally, Brenda convinced her family to end the vacation early and they headed back to London. And as soon as they got there, Brenda made her husband come with her and they drove to the street address the voices had given her. And when they got to this very specific location, they found themselves standing in front of the brain scan unit of a London hospital. Brenda and her husband were totally shocked, but before they could even react to what they were looking at, the voices in Brenda's head came back and they told her, you need to go inside and you need to request a brain scan for two reasons. One, there's a tumor in your brain. And two, this tumor is causing your brainstem to swell. At this point, Brenda was so scared that this information might actually be true that despite what her husband was saying, she went right inside the brain scan unit and she requested the scan. And when they asked her, you know, who's the doctor that referred you over here? She said, I don't have one. And then she ultimately told them that, well, there are voices in my head that told me to come over here and get this scan. Now, the doctors at the brain scan facility were not totally like, get out of here, but instead they said, look, this is a very expensive scan. We can't just let you in here and get a scan because the voice has told you to. We need a clinical reason to do 
it. We need a doctor's note saying you need this scan. And so they turn Brenda away and Brenda now is just a complete wreck. She ends up calling her psychiatrist and she explains the situation about getting this address and being told to get this brain scan. And after a few minutes of hearing her story, her psychiatrist says, okay, you know what? I will call over and I will get you an appointment to get a brain scan because I want you to be at ease. And it seems like this is probably the only way we're gonna be able to do that. And so after this conversation, the psychiatrist got in touch with this hospital and he requested the brain scan for Brenda. Brenda, and about a month later, Brenda went in, she had the scan done, and sure enough, she had a brain tumor and her brain stem was swollen. The doctors couldn't believe it because Brenda was showing absolutely no signs of having this condition. And so they told her that, well, you know, you can just wait and see what happens. This might not have any effect on you. And so you can just wait to see if you get symptoms eventually, or we can go in and do the surgery and remove this tumor. But of course, doing brain surgery comes with some very significant risks. After thinking it over with her family, Brenda decided to go with immediate surgery. And after telling her doctors as much, the voices in her head told her that she had made the right decision. A couple of days later, Brenda went in and her surgery was a huge success. After she regained consciousness in the recovery room, the voices spoke to her. They said, we are pleased to have helped you. Goodbye. After that, Brenda never heard the voices ever again, and she never had any complications from the surgery or from the tumor. And to this day, the medical community still has no idea who those voices in her head really were. All right, man. What do you guys think about that video? Holy shit. A woman heard voices that, t that basically saved her life. Incredible, all right? Uh, I can't think of no rational, no rational reasoning behind, you know what I'm saying? What would... Uh, it had to be something supernatural, right? Something supernatural was talking to her and saved her life. I mean, there's what else can you say? You know what I mean? Told her the exact address to go. And, uh, you know what I mean? It, and it was the doctors. Holy shit, right? All right, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this uh, video in the comments below. And uh, uh, until next time, man. Peace out. Hey guys, if you really like these clips, give me a, a like, a share, and a follow on YouTube. All right, man? Peace.